Welcome to Meet the Maker Day 17. Today's prompt is the tools that I use, which is perfect because today's Mark Making Monday. So I made a little video showing some of the tools that I most commonly use during Mark Making Mondays. I'm gonna go through some of my tools that I use. Um, these tools are specifically ones that you might already have laying around your house. Um, I have bubble wrap. I have a uh, cardboard. This is just from a cardboard flap. Um, the cardboard that is thicker is generally better. It has uh, deeper grooves. And so the, the new boxes that are reducing the use of cardboard, obviously super great. Um, however, not fantastic for mark making. So if you get a durable box, keep the keep at least the flaps if you're gonna be doing some mark making. And basically it's just a matter of peeling off the paper um, to expose that the corrugation. So you see how that works. Um, and so that's what I've done here. Some of the paper I went ahead and left uh, kind of creates a more interesting mark. I'll show you that in a little bit. I also love using the netting from the tangerine, mandarin orange bags, or avocado bags. Uh, this creates a fun mark. Egg cartons is a is a new one. Um, they create some pretty cool circles. You can find different um, patterns on different egg cartons, but generally speaking, the ones I've seen are these little circles. And then um, a foam brush, and this may not be something you have at home, but they are fairly inexpensive and um, they're a fun tool that we haven't used yet in mark making, but we will. And then my ultimate favorite, the styrofoam tray. Um, again, these are just uh, the trays that you either buy meat or prepackaged vegetables. And what you can do is on the flat surface, you can go ahead and take a, uh, a not a sharp tip, but kind of a blunt tip object. So this is the end of my paintbrush and you can draw in um, different designs. Um, I won't do it actually right now because the sound is is quite, quite, uh, quite powerful. <laughs> um, but you can see here I have done a um, kind of a spiral, spiraling out square. Um, and it's just a matter of pressing into that foam this one has some round circles on it. You can tell, you can see it a little better because the paint is showing. And then um, this is just a Lay's Stacks or Pringle can lid, which creates some nice um, circles, but also gives a little bit of variety. And then rubber bands, which I really like to use um, with some watered down paint. And so I'll show you what those look like. And I wanna do something a little different today um, and show you just on a blank page what these marks look like so that there's no interference with color or anything like that. So you can specifically look at the actual mark that is being made. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more water to my watered down paint um, because it is quite watered down, it dries quick. And so I will start with the rubber bands. And so basically I'm just making sure that the rubber bands are coated in this uh, watered down paint. And then I like to just drop them on the page. So you can see here that it kind of creates these fun little organic um, rounds, right? Okay, so those are the rubber band marks. And then if I go ahead and staying in line with the circle, I did already put some acrylic paint on a paint tray. Um, this paint tray is from a to-go container. Um, so I'm just using some yellow ochre and I'll paint the bottom of this egg carton. And the paint was just straight out of the tube. There was no real water added to it. The brush itself was wet, but um, the paint wasn't thinned down. Put some pressure there. So those kind of create some fun circles. And then we will move on to 
um, bubble wrap. That's always fun. Um, so I'm going to take a wider brush. This is a Filbert style brush. It's kind of a cross between a round and a flat brush. Um, so we'll go ahead and take some green. And basically I'm just painting the green on the bubble wrap. Super fun, right? So that is that. And then um, going with some more marks, I'm gonna switch over to, let's rinse this brush a little bit. Pick up some red. Okay, and so basically I'm going back and forth. I'm not going with the grain because then a lot of paint gets inside the grooves, which doesn't end up getting used. So I like to just go kind of back and forth. And quite a, quite a bit of pressure. Uh, let me see, I might need a little bit more paint. And I'm gonna just dab a little bit of water just to get that fluid, just flow a little bit better. Okay, so you can see those nice lines that come in that creates a fun little pattern. And then um, here's the netting. And so the cool thing about this netting, I like to kind of stretch it out a little bit um, and let's use, just for the sake of mark making, let's use a little foam dabber. Just so you really can get the full effect, I'm just gonna use, um, this is just like a foam dabber and it's flat. Um, and it's really great for stencils and specifically this netting. And so I'm gonna go ahead and grab some blue paint. Okay. And then basically I just kind of hold my netting as still as I can. And I try not to do too much. I'm not doing any left or right. I'm just up and down, as up and down as I can be. Okay. And so you can get this print from the netting, but you can also, once you've done that, you can stamp this side of the net and get kind of the reverse pattern, which um, I love it. Shows up on your hands. Um, but this is really fun. I love this texture idea for any like sort of water element, um, you know, like or snake skin or mermaids or fish scales, you know, so these are su some super cool marks. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually just use, I'm gonna wet this foam brush just a little bit, grab some more of that blue. And then I'm just, what I'm doing right now is I'm just lining, I'm just putting paint on the edge of the, um, on the edge of this lid and we'll just see yeah, maybe too wet. I'm gonna grab paintbrush. And I'm gonna switch to green because I didn't have too much blue left. So basically I'm just gonna line this and we may get a little interference with the, the blue water that's already in the cap, but that's okay, you'll see the, you'll see the style. Okay. So it kind of creates that fun, pretty circle. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, the circle's exact, you know, whatever that means. Um, but it's still a little organic. Like it's not perfect. It's not, you know, it's definitely not like a graphic. Um, that's like a perfectly round circle that has the perfect line width all the way. But they are very fun um, for creating different spaces. And then last but not least is the foam stamp, which I just, I just get so tickled because it's such an amazing, um, such an amazing answer to the fact that we still have styrofoam trays floating around. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use some of this yellow ochre. And then basically I'm just painting back and forth. And you can see this is a well-used stamp for sure. So I'm gonna thin this down just a touch. Pick up a little bit more paint. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and stamp it. How fun is that, right? And so all of these marks, you know, they're made just with just with tools that you probably have lying around your house. You've got the rubber bands, you've got the Lay's or Pringles or whatever, you know, plastic lid that has a rim. You've got your bubble wrap, you've got your egg cartons, you have your cardboard corrugation, you have your styrofoam stamps, and you have your netting. So again, these are all really amazing by themselves on the, on the white background, but if you've seen any of the previous Mark Making Mondays, you know that they look really, really great um, over um, a colored page. That's it for today, but I will see you tomorrow for Meet the Maker Day 18. I'm awesome. You're awesome. Let's be awesome together.